I've been slowly acquiring a variety of sapphire bulls in order to have a selection for when folks message me about commissions. My latest purchase was mostly pinks and greens, but I just had to get this bicolor bull as well. Hmm. Today, let's try out this number 73 light green. These bulls all have a crack or two, which is why I bought them at a good discount from Tom's Box of Rocks. And Tom's team helpfully highlighted where the cracks are, which makes it easy to trim away and use the other 95% of the rough. First thing to do is cut it down to size, and I went ahead and cut out the cracked portion first. I'll figure out how much of that is usable later. Another slice, and then cut that one in half because I don't want to cut a giant gem, and we have a few pieces to work with. But what to cut? Well, on an older video, someone mentioned having trouble with ovals, specifically the Beginner Baryon Oval by Michiko Hyun. This design is freely available at the Gemology Project, where you can go and browse by many different options. If we browse by shape, and then go to oval, you can see Hyun's design and a download a PDF or a gem file. The latter is for programs like GemCAD and GemCut Studio. All loaded up, it's a nice little oval. There are star facets in the pavilion that are below the critical angle of quartz, so you can just leave them off if you want. These are the Baryon facets, steeper facets used to level the girdle that have a chained quarter moon visual effect from the side. I'm going to cut this in sapphire, so let's change the refractive index by going to the render window and choosing sapphire from our list. The default color for sapphire is the typical deep blue, but I usually look at stones in desaturated colors to better see windowing and head shadow in the render. If you don't like this particular oval, GCS has tons of ovals to choose from. If you're cutting a design for the first time, it can be helpful to use GemCut Studio's Cutting Assistant feature. It starts off by default as though you've dopped up a square piece of rough, and you can step through each individual facet or each tier of facets. So here's our first tier, cutting to a center point. If we go back, we can then cut each one of those facets individually so you can see how they all come together, in this case to a point. These are the main facets. The next step is the four girdle facets, and you can see there's a meet at one point on either side of the stone. From this we can't tell if it's the length or width that we're cutting yet, but we'll come back and check that later. Now we start cutting our Baryon facets with this little set here, which should come in pretty fast. A second tier of Baryon facets is next, and this one is visually a little tricky. You want to find where the facet meets with other facets. This is a meet point design, which means every facet should cut to a center point or meet with a previously cut facet. Then we cut our last set of Baryon facets that meet the previous Baryon facet and a main facet. The rough looks strange right now, which I think might be why this design was tricky for some people, but we're next going to cut the girdle and make our oval shape by cutting to level the girdle and meet the previous Baryon facet and girdle facet junction. Last are these optional star facets, which could add visual interest, but remember not to use them if your material is below or a refractive index of about 1.6 or it will window. Let's run through that really fast one more time. We can see now that those first cuts are to establish the length of the stone. Now onto the crown, which should come in much more easier. <laughs> now onto the crown, which should come in much easier once your shape is sorted. The first few tiers are cut to set the girdle thickness, which I typically try to set at around 0.3 to 0.6 millimeters, depending on the size of the stone and the material. Then we cut a facet to meet the girdle, and create a series of almost Baryon facets in a quarter moon shape around the ends. A few more big star facets near the table, and then we cut down to our table, and we're done. My advice for looking for diagrams is, if you're a newer cutter, try and find some that have instructions with the cutting sequence. In this case, the instructions are blank, so let's add some. The first tier was cut to a center point, which may or may not be your final center point, depending on if you cut the optional facets. The first girdle facet set the stone length. The next tier will establish a level girdle and meet at a point at the main facets. I don't know why I label them all as G for girdle facets here. You can see they're labeled on the left as 1, 2, 3, and so on, which I think is a residual of this being created in GemCAD. If you were to create this in GemCut Studio, it would call the first tier P1 for Pavilion 1, and if you add a tier at 90 degrees, it would call that G1 for Girdle 1. Anyway, next is tier 4, which I think is the trickiest to visualize. You might think you need to cut it to meet somewhere near the girdle, but you actually will meet the main facets around here, and the star facets won't be there yet. It's a similar situation for tier 5 facets. 
After that, you cut in the rest of the girdle facets and you've got an oval. Now there is more than one way to cut a stone. You are free to cut designs in a way that makes sense to you. Change up the order if you think it would work better to cut something else first, and in fact, this design was the 2016 USFG Premaster design, and they cut the girdle facets first. Note this wasn't the novice design, so just because a design has the word beginner in it doesn't mean it's easy. Anyway, like I said, the crown should be easier. Cut in the girdle leveling facets and then branch out from there. I will say it's a little tricky because you're only establishing the facets at the girdle from one tier, and creating a long, curved line of facets can be tricky to get them all lined up. Alright, back to reality. Let's get the stone dopped up. The unwritten design standards mean all ovals will be oriented lengthwise from left to right on faceting diagrams, or at the 24 and 72 indices in this case. If you have a rectangular or shaped stone, make sure you dop it to maximize yield. I've been using black wax plus super glue for a while now, so here I'm adding just a bit more wax to the dop. Then I heat the dop and the wax more so I can press it down into the stone to create a conforming surface. Adding super glue creates the bond, and I usually turn the stone over to prevent the glue from spreading out onto the stone. You can leave it like that for a couple of hours, but a drop of accelerant and the stone is ready to facet. I print out all my designs so I can mark them up if necessary, and we're starting with 41.5 degrees, which on my Raytex Shaw handpiece looks like this. I cut to an approximate center point on my 360 grit lap, not being too concerned with exactness at this stage. I'm essentially roughing in the meats here, so let's move on to the girdle. It's hard to see because this material is bright, but here's that first girdle tier. Next is tier 3, which will establish your girdle level. Here's how it looks before we cut, and then we start cutting, and we're going to go until the right point of the triangle meets the junction in the middle. Come at it from both sides and declare victory. Now we cut the rest of the berry and facets in sequence. I thought this might be one of the tricky meats, and so I added a dot of sharpie where the meat will be. Here's the very start of cutting in, and with my stone size, it doesn't take long to make the facet bigger, still on my 360 grit disc here. We can see the girdle facet starting to approach the sharpie. It's kind of visually off-putting to me, actually, because it looks like you're overcutting by going through that first barium facet. But trust the process. Do that three more times, and then move on to the last tier of barium facets. We're cutting to this new meat junction way up high on the stone. When starting a new tier, sometimes I cut just for a couple of seconds and see where the facet is coming in from, and to double check how far I have to go before it hits the meats I'm aiming for. That helps me visualize how far down I need to set my platform height, and how much material I need to cut away, and like how fast it's going to go. Or sometimes I'll catch myself on the wrong index or at the wrong angle, so it gives you a chance to correct. Once you've got your archway of berry and facets, it's time to create a level girdle across the width of the stone. This should be straightforward now, cutting to meet the previous girdle berry and facet meets. Cut in a little to see where we are, and then chop it all off. One warning. You can see there are a couple of areas where I need to cut down more to get rid of the original crystal edges. I did that, and you're going to want to double check where you're cutting if you go back and cut down more, because your instinct here might be to cut to the girdle at the X, but that will actually overcut where you want to meet near the main facets at the dot, and then you'll have to cut down more elsewhere, and it can be a vicious cycle. Here it is, all cleaned up and ready for pre-polish. I left off the optional facets on the design. If I were to cut them in, I would probably do it at like 3000 grit because they're so thin. There's less chance of overcutting that way because they'd cut in so fast. I don't remember why I pre-polished these out of order, but you can see the beauty of the gem starting to come through. And here's the main facets all pre-polished. It's a matter of going through the sequence again to pre-polish. Lastly for the pavilion is the polish, which is a subtle shift, but side by side you can kind of see the improved reflections and the sort of wetter look of the polish at 60,000 grit. Alright, transfer and on to the crown. The first facets always take the longest because we're cutting away the most material. In this case, we're creating a level girdle and establishing the rough girdle thickness. When roughing in, I try to leave about 0.6 to 0.7 millimeters of thickness. I then cut that down to the final thickness at finer grits or pre-polish. That leaves wiggle room if I make a mistake or something goes sideways. If your rough is big enough, sometimes the facets will meet at a line on the crown. You can use that as a judge of whether your transfer was good if it lines up with other girdle facet meets, like this. With my handpiece machine, it's easier for me to cut in at the table, which I usually do even at the roughing in stage. After getting it roughed in, I pre-polished everything, including the table, but there was just too much material to remove. 
Now, this is an issue that I've discovered before and forgot about where I pre-polished and then I went back to a coarser grit and that caused some pits to pop out. Kind of big ones in this case. I had to cut down through the pitted area, which meant my meats were all off. And in this case, I wound up going back through the whole stone at 600 grit. It's a good thing I left some extra girdle thickness. Besides the table, only two other facets kind of pitted out a bit when I went down to the 600 grit. I think that's related to internal stresses on the bool, but that's just, like, my opinion, man. After that, it was straightforward to pre-polish everything and then polish it up. I made a slight modification to get my table meats to line up, which is kind of a result of cumulative error from the relatively coarse adjustments I'm able to make with my handpiece protractor. A little heat releases the wax, although it's tricky because it's the middle of summer and my AC goes nearly constantly, which swirls the flame around. Finally, a few hours in the acetone bath will dissolve the superglue. I think the stone came out great, but I'll let you be the judge. It's about 9.2 by 12.2 millimeters in size and 6.195 carats. It'll be available soon on my Etsy shop for probably like $200, I don't know. All in all, this wasn't a wicked complicated design, but it did have a couple of tricky areas in the initial shaping. An easy oval is still harder than a square or a round design, but carefully studying the diagram and, if you're able, testing the cutting sequence will help you in cutting a nice oval.